All right, guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. It's race week again, this time out in Monza, but so much happening after the Dutch Grand Prix. Many big updates to go through today, certainly on the Red Bull and also the Mercedes side as well. Lewis Hamilton with some very interesting words after the Dutch Grand Prix, certainly with regard to his teammate George Russell. Russell, of course, started fourth, ended up in seventh at the end of the Grand Prix, while Hamilton made progress and way back in 14th at the start. Hamilton says if I started where Russell started, it would have been a very different story, certainly calling into question Russell as the new number one driver for Mercedes when Kim me Antonelli comes in alongside him next season. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. First of all on a Haas, apparently it's now a done deal. They've made the payment. I'm pretty sure they made the payment a couple of days ago now, but it's just, it took the weekends to clear, I think is what happened here. Now, first of all, it is controversial in the first place, really, that we're even having this conversation because Haas have this Ural Kali sponsorship and, you know, Russian oil company, whatever, that's surely there's some sort of sanctions here, but it seems like some Swiss bank or the Dutch government effectively have forced Haas to pay this money. Otherwise, the bailiffs were going to come along and seize all of their Formula One equipment, including the cars and everything else like that. So they made the payments, I think, on Friday, and it's obviously taken the weekends to clear. The payment's now cleared, they've got their money, and the Haas trucks are finally on the move to Monza. So, yeah, that is a wild story, and it's probably not the last we're going to hear of this, to be fair. This, though, on the Liam Lawson, frankly, the Logan Sargent situation, right? Because Liam Lawson and Mick Schumacher are the two drivers considered to be in the conversation to replace Sargent mid-year. Toto Wolff has said Antonelli is not happening, right? Let's say, well, he is going to join Mercedes for next year. That's now basically a 99.9% .9 guarantee but Toto Wolff says we're not going to send him to Williams for nine, eight, nine races. That ain't happening. So there's only really two options, one of which is Mick Schumacher. Interesting option. Liam Lawson is probably the preferable option, and it seems that Red Bull are willing to do so as well. Rumour has it these conversations have happened. They are potentially ongoing, and James Valls has very clearly run out of patience with, uh, you know, with Logan Sargent. Arguably, he should have run out of patience a rather long time ago, but it now seems like he's more committed than ever to making this move, potentially mid-season, and it would make a better sense, to be fair, for Williams, because it seems like with their new upgrades, they actually have a reasonably competitive car. If they weren't disqualified in qualifying from Alex Albon, they potentially would have scored some points this weekend and they weren't far off doing that regardless. So Liam Lawson in their car on a loan arrangement and it makes sense for RB as well, even though Toto Wolff is pushing for Mick Schumacher to get the seat, the talks are complex and I'd still say it's like 50-60% likely that Sargent just stays. You know, we've had these conversations before, they've not gone anywhere, but it feels like now might be you know, more likely than ever. So Toto's trying his best to get Mick the seat, but Helmut Marco says, yeah, this would be good for the young driver if he can gain some race experience. We wouldn't stand in the way of that happening. I think the point is, though, that Red Bull are making is like, hey, what if Perez just absolutely disappears over the next few rounds and we decide, you know what, yeah, Ricardo is getting that seat now, therefore we need a driver. Can we bring Lawson back? I think that might be what they're debating because I think that RB would do it. I think that Williams would do it. But Red Bull want to be sure that if they need a driver, they can just say, hey, you know, Liam, you're coming back. But obviously that would make things rather complicated for Williams. I mean, do you bring Sargent back if that was to happen? Like, it kind of gets pretty ugly, doesn't it? So there's a rumor going on there. Apparently Valve's actually basically visited Christian Horner after qualifying after, you know, not many hours after Sargent bidding it in the wall again, after putting two wheels on the grass, wet grass, at that and yeah discussing Lawson's availability for a potential short-term loan. Speaking of other rookies on the grid this was confirmed today by Mercedes and more to say on them in a second that Kimi Antonelli will make his FP1 debut at Monza this weekend. So his first time in a Formula 1 car in official capacity at his home track this is going to be awesome. And it's also going to be great in the sense that they were, well, he's going to drive George's W15. There was speculation the other day that he was going to drive Hamilton's instead and he was going to replace Hamilton for the session. But they've decided to actually go, no, he's going to replace Russell and Hamilton's time out of the car will come slightly later on. So that is interesting because Mercedes will have Antonelli and Hamilton, both in a Mercedes, on the track at the same time 
presumably during the session where they are going to announce the handover from Hamilton to Antonelli for next season, which um, will be pretty spectacular, I'm sure, but also give some question as to whether George Russell is capable of being the number one driver that Mercedes need. Ferrari definitely have two excellent drivers. Sainz did a very good job in yesterday's race, but qualified further down than he'd like. Leclerc was frankly brilliant to hold off Piastri as he did and secure a podium for the second race in a row. Of course, he was fourth in, um, well, initially in Spa, but then Russell got disqualified from there. So um, basically, Leclerc and Ferrari have an upgrade on the way. They've heard Formula Uno, it's not just going to be an aero track specific pack, but several things. So apparently a big upgrade. We also heard Fred Vasseur and Charles Leclerc talk about this and say, yeah, we've got something pretty sizable planned for Monza. Whether it fixes their issues, that's a question, but they were better than we thought they would be in Zandvoort, all things considered. And Vasseur says they're in the fight for the championship. And, you know, they're not absolutely miles behind, but it's just quite clear that McLaren have the massively upper hands now and they're still quite a way behind Red Bull. They're certainly not in the driver's championship fight. I will say Vasseur has been maybe more optimistic lately than I might have expected him to be given the circumstances. Same really with Fernando Alonso. Now, I think this quote means the cars that Aston Martin are trying to fight with rather than Ferrari being the car to beat because that's either the case or Alonso has heard something about the Ferrari upgrades which makes him say Ferrari will be the car to beat in the next two rounds which would be an unprecedented statement to make if he hasn't heard anything about upgrades, if that's what he means, right? Because, I mean, McLaren are clearly the fastest right now, Red Bull, Mercedes, so, you know, Ferrari are going to be the car to beat. Where does that come from? Okay, Monza, they should be good. They usually are. Like, they turn up the engine to the absolute max there. They always seem to build a car to do well at Monza, and I'm sure that it'll be pretty good. Maybe they even win. I mean, it's not out of the realms of possibility. But um, even the race after that, right, we then go to, is it Singapore or Baku, one of those two, where they're certainly not going to be favoured. So, so, um, yeah, I think what Alonso probably meant was that Aston Martin are going to try and challenge the Ferraris, or Alonso's heard something about their upgrade package, which uh, nobody else is letting on that makes him believe that it's going to be an absolute rocket ship after the fact. But let's talk about some of the drama with regard to Red Bull, of course. Yesterday, all things considered, was pretty damn good damage limitation from Max Verstappen, right? Even Lando, though, he was turning the screw, saying simply lovely on the radio, saying that, oh, wow, Max even dropped back to the Ferrari. That was certainly a surprise. And Jos Verstappen, Max's father, not so happy about the arrangement. He says to Via Play that basically he saw this coming. The updates are okay, but they don't do much. He also said Max wasn't pleased after qualifying. He even went on to say that it's time for Red Bull to take a good look in the mirror. And you've got to say for Jos, he did kind of call this, didn't he? Like at the start of the season when the Horner stuff was brewing, he did call that a downfall was potentially on the horizon. And well, here we are today when Max hasn't won a race in the last five rounds. Now, he still scored plenty of points and is still the heavy driver's championship favourite, but it's not necessarily completely over yet, as we talked about yesterday. Max even said, look, points are points, but um, we're just too slow right now. And there's clearly something they've got to understand. The big part of it, though, was the fact that on Verstappen, car this weekend they ran the older specification floor and the literally the Bahrain floor which was substantially slower than the newer one as we'll describe here in a second but potentially makes the car easier to drive there are some debate on this so Max reckons that they've simply gone wrong with their development I mean it's pretty rare that you see a team regress to uh, literally start of year specification in certain aspects certainly a team as accomplished as Red Bull over the last couple of years that floor apparently was two tenths slower than the newer version used by Perez. And to be fair, these numbers kind of add up. If we look at the race pace differentials between the relative drivers, we had Verstappen here roughly two tenths of a second a lap faster than Perez. Usually you'd expect the gap there to be more like, you know, three tenths, three and a half tenths, maybe four tenths, maybe more to Perez. So um, the fact that he was two tenths faster kind of tells me maybe he actually had the slower car max, marginally at least, and Perez had the fastest setup. I think that's the main point really right now is that Red Bull, they were running into problems for their practice this weekend for the Dutch Grand Prix and they decided going into FP3, so they'd done FP1, they'd done FP2, overnight going into an FP3 session where there was no real competitive running, they decided to put the floor straight on the car and 
So the setup was not perfect at all. This is probably the main reason why Max was so far behind Lando. It was just because his car just wasn't very good. It wouldn't really turn into corners. It's obviously still a fast car and it's still got Max Verstappen behind the wheel. But um, there's no doubt that they did not have the optimal setup this weekend. Red Bull were clearly kind of scrambling. They put the old floor on the car with no time to set up for that new floor. I guess, or for the old floor. I guess maybe they felt like, well we use the floor at the start of the season, we can make it work. But the feeling was that they still didn't really nail the setup. And obviously the weather affected sessions. Red Bull couldn't even test the floor. So Max went straight into qualifying with a floor that he hadn't used in several rounds. And, you know, no surprise, they ended up three and a half tenths off the pole position time, really. They also say the wing setup was incorrect. With only one stop, they had lower degradation than expected. So, you know, there were some interesting takeaways for Red Bull. I think the main benefit or advantage that they'll be looking for is the fact that they've simply learned a lot this weekend. On some level, they use this weekend as like a test session. They run Max on an old floor. I'm sure they've learned a lot. Whether that's enough learning to be able to turn their season around at this point and become the dominant team they were, I don't think that's ever going to happen again based on the evidence of recent rounds. That is another question. But um, like Red Bull say they've got upgrades in the works, they're working on things, but this is kind of like what Aston Martin did before, right? Testing everything under the sun and hoping that something eventually sticks. It's not a side of a team that really knows what they're doing when you're throwing on an old floor with one practice session to go and in some ways I think it's a bit of a miracle that Verstappen ended up second place and didn't really lose that many points in the championship to Lando there was certainly a world where if Verstappen you know let's say Piastri out qualified Max Piastri would have you know I'm sure probably ended the race in seconds Piastri might have been able to get the move done anyway if he wasn't still not perfect on his ties and if Charles Leclerc wasn't you know so good at defending right and Max even says yeah quite a while I've had these issues with the RB20 depends on the type of track he was even asked the question is is this one of the most difficult cars to drive in his career at Red Bull? And he says, yeah, definitely not the easiest. So, you know, he's suffering with this understeer and the oversteer that many of these absolute boats of this era of cars have dealt with over the last few years, but Red Bull haven't dealt with until about seven races ago, seven, eight races ago. So, you know, you can make your mind up on why that may or may not be. Now, McLaren, they're not resting on their laurels either. And this is the point, right? The dominance that Norris had yesterday, I don't expect that to continue. Can and Norris win the next nine races in a row. Very unlikely. It's possible. Very unlikely, however, certainly given what we've seen even from Lando so far this season. So Verstappen's still the heavy favourite, but, and I don't expect the gap we saw in Zandvoort to kind of be repeated many more times, if at all, from now to the end of the year, really. But I do still think they're going to have the strongest package. And this is why McLaren have more upgrades in the works to get even further ahead. Andrea Stella even did mention what Sebastian Vettel did at the end of 2013, winning nine races in a row to take the title. And Andrea Stella says, we may do the same. Now, this kind of has an air of that classic quote. I know that a few of you guys will know what I'm about to mention, but um, from Mattia Bonotto after the Hungarian Grand Prix in 2022, when he said, there's no reason we can't win the next 10 races in a row. Of course, they won precisely zero of those races as the season concluded. It was Red Bull, it was Mercedes, of course, in Brazil that year that were taking the wins. So that didn't age especially well. This may not age especially well either, but I will say that the two situations are somewhat different, right? Ferrari at that time were not showing much promise of getting back to being a top team. McLaren are the top team in terms of pure car performance. They are not the top team in terms of strategy, in terms of radio communication, and probably in terms of drivers as well. But um, they do have right now the fastest car. And even I think it was Norris yesterday who was asked about this and he said, yeah, 100%. We have the best package right now. The other piece they hear, of course, is on Mercedes, right? So again, it was a race yesterday and we've seen this multiple times over the last couple of seasons when Russell qualifies quite well Hamilton has a difficult qualifying session out in Q2 then gets the three place penalty ends up in P14 but yet at the end of the race they basically finish together. And we've seen this plenty of times before when Hamilton has a bad qualifying and Russell qualifies well. 
but often they just, you know, Russell might regress and Hamilton makes progress. Now, it's not like Hamilton had a crazy good race, in my opinion. He was making some very good moves. I was impressed by his racecraft. Like, um, you know, I think he did pretty well. And clearly the car wasn't especially good. We saw the numbers earlier. He was about two tenths of a second a lap, though, faster than Russell over the course of the Grand Prix. And in the final stint, he was actually faster than Russell, even though, you know, his soft tyres were older, right? Well, he at least put them on first. I think maybe Russell's soft tyres were a bit used. But nonetheless, Russell just did didn't have much pace in that final stint. So um, Hamilton was like, look, I had a pretty decent race. I felt like I did a lot of moves, but just didn't get very far. That's another thing as well when there's just no DNFs and the Mercedes wasn't that good anyway yesterday. There was no DNFs up front. There wasn't really ever an opportunity for Hamilton to make a pass unless there was a safety car on some of the cars ahead. And then he says, yeah, I was happier today. Moving forwards, the car felt better. Had some understeer in the early part of the weekends. They changed it overnight. They took out a bunch of wing on the car to try and make the car more balanced. And that helped with the car. But, um, you know, this I thought was interesting, right? If I had qualified where George was, I would have finished further ahead. And, um, you know, he basically went on to say the same thing. We could have been closer to the podium today. So, I mean, this is, like, Hamilton said this a lot over the last couple of years. And at some point you can say, oh, well, you know, come on, just qualify better. And you can make that case. But to be fair, when Hamilton does qualify better, he does make the case that he will be better basically outperforming Russell right and sure Russell made the one-stop work in Spa but he was underweight so does it really count I mean his car was underweight so it's not going to work the tyres as hard and the tyre whisper of George Russell wasn't exactly on display yesterday in Zandvoort I think George is very good but um like he's clearly not on Lewis's level and again it's just a little dig isn't it from Hamilton he's saying look George started fourth and ended seventh I started 14th and ended eighth had I started fourth no way George I'm finishing seventh right that's the implication there because George had to two-stop because he'd cooked his tyres I think so um, they weren't able to make the one-stop work Mercedes because they knew they were going to get caught by Perez and Sainz regardless so they had to make the two-stop work and even when they did George wasn't in position to try and get that move back Hamilton at least thinks that you know if you put me in that spot I would have been able to do so and um you know we've seen over the last few rounds with the races that Hamilton has won that yeah he's probably right to think this way but again just the fact that he says it he's like yeah but I started with George George did. I'd have maybe fought for a podium, but George is in P7, one point ahead of me, like, you know, what's going on there type thing, especially when you've got changes next year with Hamilton got an Antonelli and that's the big question at Mercedes really if their car is the fastest next year or close to the fastest do they have the drivers to win the championship let's say next season McLaren and Mercedes have the same strength car and Red Bull and Ferrari are a step behind for example who wins the championship at that point I mean right now you might well say Lando you might still say Max depending how competitive the Red Bull is compared to the front runners would you say George? I mean, maybe, but George, his qualifying is always going to be good, but his race pace and, you know, racecraft, there's other factors that clearly aren't on Hamilton's level, and Hamilton will absolutely let him know about that every time we get a race like this, and of course Hamilton's frustrated with the qualifying, but, you know, the race pace, again, spoke for itself on some level. And maybe Antonelli's going to be a very interesting test to see where Russell is in many respects going into next season. So fascinating, really. Hamilton also said, though, that, look, we've got to check whether this upgrade actually worked because they brought the new floor and the car wasn't that good. So the question is, does the floor work and we've just set it up poorly or does the floor actually not work and we've got to get back to what we were using in Silverstone and Spa? But of course, Silverstone, they won. Spa, they won. So it's not too bad going back to the old spec. The problem is that McLaren have improved again over the last few hours. So massively intrigued your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.